You are watching Access LaPorte County, Channel 97. Coming up next is the March 14th, 2023 meeting of the Michiana Shores Town Council. You can find more information for this meeting by visiting www.accesslaportecounty.org. All right, I'm gonna call this meeting to order at 701. Um, if we could all stand up for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Just an update, um, I'll be filling in and uh, running this meeting for Dinah, our president, as she is on, but she is virtually slash remote. So um, I have all the agenda items that we're gonna be discussing and she will be able to uh, get feedback on any of the key topics. Um, as, as by requirement and law, we do have three enough to make votes, uh, enough for a quorum. Um, Dinah and Sam, who I will do a roll call in a few seconds, uh, will not be able to vote because they are not present. So with that said, I'm going to do a roll call. President Dinah Dumbries. Present. Vice President Michael Martinez here. Present uh, Ralph Box. Present. Sam Paxton. Here. Rich Young. He's virtual, right? Sam. Sam Paxton is virtual, yes. Okay. Rich Young. Here. Clerk Treasurer Joan Lewis. Here. Attorney Brad Adamski. Here. Fire Chief Gary Bendix. Here. Police Chief Bar Swistek. Present. Park Board President Dolly Millett. Absent. BZA President Matt Bowen. Absent. Building Commissioner slash Code Enforcement Officer Deb Chubb. I would say absent. She absent, okay. Yeah. Floodplain Administrator Ray Dumbries. He's absent. Okay. Or is he on virtual? Dinah, is Ray with you? She should be right. No. No, Ray is not, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, commission President Ralph Fox present, we know that, and then website Samantha Arnold. And what about Ro 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 Save the best for last. That's because Joe loves me so much. I don't do that. Rogue Commissioner Bob Sarkowski president. That's done by your uh, president of the council. Bob. All right. So moving forward to number three, adopting the meeting agenda. Has everyone had a chance to review the meeting agenda? Yes. Hold okay. I, I have a question. When do you open the bids? It's not listed on here. Well, that's what I'm going to, it's number 10. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to move it up since we do have um, voice, uh, Republic Services on. So that's part of my adjustment. Okay. Does Rich, can Rich get a paper copy of the uh, agenda by chance, Joan? Do you have one? He's gone. Do you have one? This is from Frederick. That's the meeting minutes. That's not the agenda. Well, it says it. Does it? No. Well, I must have gotten carried away. It's the meeting minutes, so much you're joking. Uh, give me a few seconds while Rich gets his uh, agenda items. You do have one of those. In fact, you've got two in your packet because that's the third revision. I went to them all and it's two. I know I packed it. Okay, you must have took it apart when you. All right, so I want to make a. Mo uh, we do have a representative from Waste uh, from Republic Services on virtually, correct? Jim. Jim. Yeah, uh, this is Doug Rogan, and we have Doug Rogan Bob on as well. Okay, and you guys, you gentlemen, are both uh, representing Republic Services. Correct. Got it. Correct. 
Do we have anyone from uh, waste management on? Evidently. Okay. So I make a motion. I'll, I want to make a comment to move the refuse contract up to the uh, to what number is this going to be? Uh, number six, right after the reports for committees and officers. Why don't you do it now? Because you advertised it for seven. Okay. Why make them wait? We always did it right after the roll call. Okay. All right, I'll make a motion to uh, move up the refuse contracts to, to right after I get done speaking with the additional meeting agenda updates. Um, I also want to add a public comment to uh, bullet point number seven, the STR. Uh, so it would be 7A, public comment, before we vote on the STR that is uh, coming before us. Okay. Um, I also want to add reinstalling the town map under number 12 miscellaneous business, which is 12A. And Dinah and Sam, you can hear me correctly, correct, uh, right? Yes. Okay. All right. Any other updates, uh, town council members? No. Richie, anything? Yeah. Just No? Okay. I need a motion to accept the meeting agenda with the updates stated. I'll make that motion. Need a second? Second. Got it. Okay. So you have Ralph and Sam. Yep, correct. Thank you. Yep, no problem. So with that, uh, we're going to be moving forward with the closed refuse contracts or bids that were submitted from waste uh, from waste management and Republic. The first one I'm going to be opening is the Republic Services. And just a little background, everyone, that these were closed bids. So this is the first of our knowledge. Seeing these. Give us a second while we try to get through this real quick. Perfect. All right, I'm going to be re uh, reading the Republic Services uh, pricing page. I hope that suffices um, verbatim. All three uh, present council members uh, have a copy. Thank you for adding those copies uh, to this packet. Um, refuse bid specification pricing page March 13th, Town of Michiana Shores, contract extension. Dear Honorable Town Board, it has been our privilege to serve the Town of Michiana Waste Collection Service for many years. We sincerely appreciate your business. We hope that we have exceeded all of your expectations. Please see the below pricing for the response for the bid specifications for the Town of Michiana Shores. Starting April 1st, 2023 through March 31st, this is a three-year contract. Starting April 1st, two, uh, 2023 through March 31st, 2024, they will bill the town of Michiana Shores at $13.39 per unit times the 348 units that were identified within the town for a monthly or for a monthly fee of $4,659.72 on April 1st, 2024, the second year through March 31st, 2025, the rate per unit increases to $14.06 per unit at the same 348 units for the town, which now increases the monthly rate to $4,892.88. The third and final year, which will begin on April 1st, 2025 through March 31st, 2026, the per unit cost is raised again to $14.76 per unit at the same fixed 348 units for the town, which comes to $5,136.48 per month. 
We have on here an option year, April 1st, 2026 through March 31st, 2027 at $15.65 per unit at 348 units per ton for a, a fee, monthly fee of $5,446.20. Thank you again for your consideration and the privilege of serving the residents of town of Michiana. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at 219-916-3547. Sincerely, Jane Metro's a municipal services manager, but we do have Republic on our call for any initial questions from our town members uh, virtually and or uh, in person. Okay, um, I have a question. Go ahead. Okay, um, um, my question, can you please tell me again the sum, the total for the number again, since I can't see it? Um, let me add it up. Do you want the, the per month or just the total? Give me the whole total. All right, give me a second. I can just send and see these guys, if that's appropriate. That's fine. Ralph, uh, Ralph, while I'm calculating this for you, is going to uh, send this okay. electronically as well for any other okay, questions now, you may have. Okay, and then I have another question. The contract, as you read, it says for 346 homes. What happens when, I know we had, um, I think there were two still under construction, so if the number of the homes in the contract changes, how does that affect anything? Uh, you stated uh, 346. This is for 348. Oh. Okay. And the total that you asked for, Dinah, for the three years, I came to the total of $14,689.08 for three years, with the option year being a fourth year at $5,446.20. Okay. All right. Thank you. So, John, what's our current uh, contract? What do we expect to do? It's... In the, you get it every month, but I still don't remember exactly what it is. For the uh, increments of the year of that part. Um, I uh, reach out to Sam virtually, also any uh, Ralph or um, Rich, any questions or comments? Because if not, I will move forward to the waste management bid that is uh, also closed. I have no comments or questions other than it'd be good to know what we're paying currently. You're paying four thousand and three dollars and twenty cents a month right now. Four thousand, I'm sorry. Four thousand zero zero three dot two O. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Joe. Mm-hmm. Rich, did you have a comment or question? Yeah. In the stuff that John gave me, did I see at first that Republic was offering a one-year extension? No. Oh, originally, yeah. yes, but to make it fair to the other uh, providers, we did three years. Um, essentially, there was a, a miscommunication, we cleared it up, hence the reason why we have three years now, so we can disregard that one year. So the first year is a 16% increase over what we're currently doing. What was the first year total that we received? Um, for the new, for the current, uh, for a April 1st, 2023 through March 31st, 2024, we'll be paying $4,659.72 per month. Any other questions, uh, council members? 
Okay, I'm gonna be opening up the waste management uh, sealed bed as well. Give me a second, uh, everyone, as I go through this pamphlet there, or this uh, binary they gave us. I believe I found it here, labeled compensation on page 23 of the binder. I'm going to read it verbatim, some of it's a little uh, wordy. Compensation, the contractor shall be paid for work performed under the contract pursuant to the dis disbursement schedule set by the clerk treasurer pursuant to the bid accepted and determined by the town council. The number of dwelling units at the present time is approximately 348 more or less. Should any territory be annexed to the town, a figure equal to the actual number of dwelling units requiring service on the basis of a physical pound made by the town shall be added to the contract and effective upon the date that such, such annexation is complete and final as prescribed in the applicable statutes of the state of Indiana. Waste management provides each customer exceptional service at an outstanding value. Our goal is not to be the lowest cost service provider, but to provide the most value to our customers through our assets, skilled employees that can focus on safety, unparalleled customer service, and innovative technology, all while providing consistent quality service over the full life of the contract. When combined, these benefits allow the town of Michiana Shores to rely on us for all waste management needs and save on your most valuable resource, which is time. The price per unit for Michigan Shores is $18.50, $18.50 all inclusive. An 8% price increase cap year cap will be uh, issued for year two and year three. Bulk is standard bulk pricing up to three items for $35 prepaid and pre-scheduled by the residents. Was everyone able to hear that? That's on uh, virtually. Yes. Diana? 
Yes, I'm sorry. I keep, I keep it muted. Yes, thank you. Okay. Yes. If you want to look. Michael, what was the per unit? 18. 1850. With an 8% increase for year two and an 8% increase for year three. So if I'm doing the math correctly, it's six thousand four hundred thirty-eight. I'll take your word for it, but yeah, that sounds right. Three hundred forty-eight units. Yes, sir. Yep. Any questions virtually or in person from the town council members? I do have a comment to make, but it has to do with something else. Actually, Deb is trying to get on the meeting, but um, she gets no response. She said she was in the waiting room. Ralph? Uh, yeah, I've been busy for the last five minutes, okay? Sorry, Deb. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. She is now admitted. <coughs> So uh, one of the things I'm trying to find in both of them yeah, go ahead. is uh, what happens if we're unhappy? Uh, what are the, the terms if we decided, if they decide to cancel us and we decide to cancel them? There's usually something like that. And I'm having trouble finding it in the first one. Yeah, it's not. I it's in the past. Is it? Uh, well, uh, I don't know if it's anything other than we can cancel it. But I, feel, I, I would like to know that we can cancel it for some reason where we're mm. really angry. I mean, I would say take take a few minutes to look at that. Yes. Oh. Excuse me? Yes, Jim, he's a good man. Jim Metro Yes. From Waste Management? That was, he's oh. from Republic. You want to come both of them, don't you? No. Oh. You're asking specifically for. Um, Either one. Okay. Hey, Jim. Jim. Hey, this is Doug Rosenbaum. Yeah. This, can you hear me? This is Doug Rosenbaum of Republic. Yes, Doug. We can hear you. Yeah. So just like in those uh, previous contracts we have, we also gave an example contract. If you look at item number nine on that, it has termination clauses in there for 30 days. If you got 30 days of written notice, if we don't rectify them, then it kind of has like a little time frame that goes down there. So just like you had in the previous contract with this for the last three years, there are termination clauses. It's basically you can't just call them and say, hey, we're done. You have to give them time to rectify a problem or an issue that it has, but there is a time frame that kind of lays that out. Um, but so in the example contract, it's under, uh, it's number nine in the example contract, uh, the bottom page, page 310. And there's an entire paragraph that relates to a termination of a contract. And it's the same thing that we've had with you guys for the last few years. Okay, I, I just was not privy to the prior contracts, I was unaware. And uh, there's a lot of material here, so I haven't quite found what you're describing yet. It, it would probably be, this is Jim, it's pro it would probably be easier to find it in the uh, the one with the tabs on it, uh, there's actually a contract, a sample contract, under the tab that says contract. This is it. There you go. Okay. It would be page three of 10 on that and item number nine. Any other questions, council members, comments? 
before we take it to a vote? Well, if I'm understanding this right, we're saying the first year would be 1850 for waste management. Correct. Per unit. Correct. And then with an 8%. And then 8% on top of that makes it almost 20. And then 8% on top of that makes it 2058. Yep, for year three. 2150. In the first year, the Republic would be charged with less than $5 per minute. In the second year, they would be charged almost $6 less. And in the seventh year, seventh year third year, it's like $6.80 less. I've been around this government for a while now. We've had, in my opinion, very good success, success and satisfaction of the Republic. I agree. Obviously, the lawyer will be taking a look at the contract, right? If he asks you to. If he asks you to. <laughs> I think. Don't inform me, I will take a look at it. Sounds pretty good idea. But well, we've had very good luck. Yeah. And the only thing I regret is that Doug is retired. <laughs> and around forever. We gave him a nice gift. We did, but I wish he was retired. Any <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, of you who know our current refuge guy has been around. Yeah. I've had 20 years. So, so Rich, what are we saying then? What, what, what are you what are you suggesting? I'm suggesting that it's kind of ridiculous to pay that much more huh? for a service we don't know yeah. over one that we've known for Yeah. Well, no, we're, we're very pleased with the service that we have. Right. So Okay. So I need somebody to make a motion to pick a uh, what do you call it? A supplier? Is that right, Joe? Contract. A contract. A contract to the uh, either Republic or Waste uh, Management. Some of these make a motion. I move that this town council accept the contract with the Republic for these two years. And I'll second that. So actually I would go further and propose that we go ahead and lock in the fourth year. Did you hear that? Uh, Dian no, I didn't hear. What did Ralph say? Diane and Sam, uh, Ralph is. Uh, we are moving forward with Republic, so continuing right. our services, but we want to look at the fourth option, the option year that was given to us on this bid sheet for Republic. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think that's a good idea. I like the idea of looking at that. Huh? Are we voting only for three years now or are we voting for the whole four? We can vote for four if it's allowed. Yeah. Do you okay with that, Rich? You make a motion. Well, even if fourth year is three dollars cheaper than the other company in the first year, so yeah, I think it's probably good. Okay. All right. Is there, is there a time frame to exercise the option? I don't know, guys. On the phone, can you? Uh, yeah. Uh, Republic, is there a time frame on exercising this fourth option year? I apologize. I missed that question. Uh, you have on your bid sheet an option for a fourth year uh, for 2026 to 2027. Is there a time frame in which this expires? So the option year is part of your bid spec. Um, so basically we apply to a three year and then we just put in that fourth option year and realistically you can make that decision, you know, we would like to know at least, you know, 30 days in advance that you wanted to accept that. So you do not have to accept it this time. That pricing is valid for the three years and the option years, you can exercise that any time up until uh, March 31st of 2026 or until you would put out another set of bid specs. And the price would be the same? Yeah, you have a lock in pricing right up until uh, that time. Um, obviously, the sooner we know, we always feel better. Um, but it, yeah, unless you put out bid specs, um, that pricing is good up until March 31st of 2026. But if you put out bid specs, you know, to go out for bid again, which is obviously your choice, because this is an option year, and you decide to do that in January of 2026, 
then it would go up for bid and then option year would be null and void um, and we would turn in different numbers at that point in time. Well, since uh, I'm just making a comment now, since we're allowed to make a comment even between the emotions, I think that it would be a good idea just to go with the fourth option right now, and we're all set for four years. I agree. Do we need to make a new motion to add the fourth year, or are we good to go because it's all on the bid sheet? Restate the motion. Yeah, there is. Okay. I need a, a, a motion to accept the Republic Services bid sheet with the fourth option year included. So make an amendment to that first motion that was made by Rich. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, I move that we go ahead and include the fourth option year into the three-year original uh, uh, cut. And I'll second that motion. Got it. Well, thank you, Republics. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, so, by I would like to see all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Three ayes for the present uh, town council members. All right. Thank you, Republic, for joining. I uh, look forward to the next four years of uh, services for you. Thank you for all the hard work up to this point and the uh, continued work as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. Just thank them. We appreciate your business as well, and thank you, and uh, we'll be here for the next four years, and we'll talk then. But thank you for everything. Great. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. All right. Moving forward to number four. Five, the minutes, approved minutes of February 14th and the February 24th executive sessions. Has everyone had a chance to review? I have. Yes. Any comments, any corrections? I have comments. Yes, Joan, go ahead. You sent this out to everybody and nobody noticed that at the top of it, it says agenda and not meeting minutes. Did you notice it? Or did I get it? it? What does it say on yours? Meeting agenda or meeting minutes? It says agenda on mine. Okay, we'll just cross it out. Well, Dinah has to come in and sign it, so I'll just make that correction for the page she signs. Rich noticed it was too late. I mean, Both of them. Yeah, have. you can't tell me at 7 o'clock to get changes done. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, uh, I have no comments or change. All right. I need a motion to accept the minutes with the adjustment of the uh, title of that document. So moved. No, we'll second it. Okay. And all in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 All right, moving on to number five. Our six now reports from the committees, officers, and clerk treasurer, invoices and claims. Ms. Joan Lewis. Thank you. Let's start with the March 14, 2023 vouchers. Quickly, we're in the floor. Town of Long Beach, $5,174 for police protection. Michigan Shores Volunteer Fire Department, $105 for rental of the hall and our office and Republic Services for $4,003.20 for refuse services. Department of Water Works for water at the garage, $9.36. Uh, Baker Tilly. I don't know why the computer separates this, but this one's not, but there's another one. Um, Baker Chili, that was for their services for our annual financial report, $1,375.25. Comcast for internet, $121.30. AT&T Mobility, $94.83. Ralph Fox for cable and adapters for our video system, $29.35. AE Voice, software for payroll, $1,800, software for the fund, which is our financial fund, $1,800, and software for billing, which is our utilities, $3,030. Jim McKay, 
for professional services for the uh, he downloaded Microsoft Outlook and set up some equipment for us, $158. Brenda Hackman traveled to the post office and back, $45. Fire and protection, $3,683.16 with the Michigan and Short Volunteer Fire Department. Department of Water, water for Kincaid Park, $9.36. Uh, myself for $12, uh, postage stamps have gone up again. I don't know if you're aware of that. I was not. I looked for it on the internet, paid what said on the internet, and it was not right. So when I got to the post office, I had to add $12. $12. Uh, Belson Outdoors, this is for the signpost. Uh, for the one signpost that the, the ghost checked in. Um, we got really got a deal on it because it took off almost three hundred dollars. It was supposed to be over eight hundred dollars, and we got it for five hundred and forty dollars. Okay. So we did real well on that. Um, and a postal service two hundred and forty dollars for four rolls of stamps for a grand total of two twenty two thousand two hundred and twenty nine dollars and eighty one cents. Any questions? No, I'll make a motion to approve that for the budget expenses. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> did Rich second it? Yes. Yes, he did. And three eyes, I believe. Yeah. Please speak up. I'm deaf. I need to have a flower. So you have three eyes? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I don't know if you guys want to start supplying for the time. Yeah, because I don't want to get in trouble by you. Okay. February edition of vouchers. Nipsco. Street lights, nineteen dollars and two cents. Electric for the garage, sixty-six dollars and twenty-one cents. Heat for the garage, one hundred and thirty-seven dollars and eighty-one cents. Uh, dual and repair, four hundred and forty-seven dollars and eighty-one cents. That was repaired to the 2016 Ford pickup. It looks like it was just general sales. Um, then we have Chase Card Services for software for our Adobe, $16.04 for Microsoft, $23. Freeman and Associates uh, for legal for January, February, uh, this is on the Grobelny case, $2,865. Global Engineering Plan. And surveying, they uh, helped us apply for the CCG, which is the Community Crossing Grant for local roads and streets. Um, we apply, and hopefully we'll get a, a grant. It costs thirty-five hundred dollars for the engineering and uh, entering all this data into the computer. That's for total cost now of the. Additional voucher seven thousand hundred and seven thousand seventy-four dollars and eighty-nine cents. Any questions? I so we accept the additional vouchers. For I'll second this. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> Aye. Three ayes. So, so you sign those. I'll read you some more. This is for the February payroll for Deb Chell, a grand total of $3,890.31. This is everything transferring over from the payroll to the general. It's recorded almost immediately when we do it. Um, do you have any questions? No. I'd like a motion to approve those expenses. Bridge. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Three eyes. Okay. I should have set up here. Yeah, I know. Um, this one is for the February payroll taxes, $539.49. I'm not going to read it all out. That was just for the one pay payroll. I'll make a motion to approve the payroll taxes. So, 
All in favor? That's all I have. <coughs> Did we forget to approve the executive meeting? Yes. Yes, we did. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from the executive meeting. Do you need a second, Rich, to look at them? No, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Nice catch. Thank you, gentlemen. Invited the secretary to Thank you. And you said that was it for you, Joan, in terms of invoices? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's it. Well, all right. Moving on to number seven, resolutions and ordinances. We have the Comprehensive Plan 2023 update. Uh, yeah. The uh, Planning Commission uh, approved the, um, the new proposed Comprehensive Plan for the last week. Um, we had... Do not think we should try to vote on this might I look at full group of conference members to provide and back input and vote on that. Um, essentially, we uh, collected quite a bit of information from all sorts of places and tried to roll that into the document, made a lot of updates to it. But primarily, the focus was on the uh, final chapter of the strategic plan that we pulled. Um, so it is available uh, online, you can download a copy, um, and you can come in and um, I'm sure John can make a copy for you. Uh, so Thank you. Got it. Um, Got it. But we will try to vote on it at the next meeting. Perfect. And Rich does have a paper copy? I believe it does. Yep. Okay. So we're looking to vote on this next uh, next town council meeting, uh, Rich. So if any questions, reach out. All right, thank you for that. Uh, number moving forward, number eight, we have an STR permit uh, for 412 El Portal. Amanda, Marion. Yep. Okay. Um, before we discuss this, we have added seven A for any kind of public comment. Um, before we move forward on this STR permit request. Anyone in person or anyone virtually that wants to make a comment? Going once, going twice, sold. Okay. I would make a point that um, Chris Wolf, who lives next door to these folks, uh, did um, Messaged me today and said that he was uh, fine. He was okay. good with the uh, short term. Okay. And just to confirm that this was it, these works and this process was in the works prior to the moratorium. Oh uh, yes. Okay. Okay. Um, so let me go first. Uh, thank you for packaging that very well. It was very easy to review. Um, and the checklist, I saw everything that I needed in terms of requirements. The one thing that I did not see, um, and maybe it was missed and or a gentleman you can update, was there a copy of the check for the $150 application fee? Was that ever presented to you? June? I don't yeah, I have the minutes deposited. Sure. Yeah, I don't remember. It was quite a while ago. <laughs> Yeah, if you drop it off, it's recorded because we don't hold anything. And then I constantly forget it. <laughs> I can keep out of things. So I'm sure that you've paid for it. Okay. Should we get a copy of the receipt in the file? Yeah, we do. Okay. Um, the other comments that I have um, is based on the documentation that you gave is that you're only allowed two parking spots per the drawing. So make sure we adhere to that because you are a violation of the STR agreement that you signed. Um, also, uh, that based on the inspection with three bedrooms and one and a half baths, the max people in that house that can stay overnight is six people. Yes. Okay, so that would be a direct violation of the agreement that you signed as well. Always, 
just always make sure because that's kind of sometimes the issue is that things get out of hand quickly and we just don't want any of any unnecessary calls or nuisances. Um, and then the last thing, um, as again, you've pretty much met all the requirements, but I didn't look into it this much because it's not a requirement yet, is who is your point of contact in case of issues with your potential renters? Do you have one? Yeah, um, we're both listed on the wall and everything is the main contact. Um, my sister also lives on the other side of 12 in Michigan City, so she's a contact, and my aunt lives in Grand Beach, so she helped. Got it. And just asking, because I saw an application, do you folks still live in Chicago off of Waveland? Or? Yes. Okay. But you, we're, clearly, here, we're here like half the time. Okay. Though, so. But clearly you have people in the area to come here. Yes. And, okay. Yeah. Uh, any questions? So I, I got lots of things I was going to bring up. There is one thing, um, and I couldn't tell in uh, the photos, uh, but we recently updated the uh, noise ordinance in town. Quiet hours for the whole town have been identified, and they, uh, so you need to make sure that what you're publishing in in the home uh, matches what that new ordinance is. Uh, and the, uh, the ordinance is on the website, yeah. so look for it if you can't find it. Contact somebody. But just uh, I, my guess is you probably have the old hours there. Yeah. You just passed this ordinance. Yes. And not We'll, so, we'll print out a new copy. Just double check it. It doesn't change a lot, but it does trim. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I have no other comments or questions. Rich, any questions or comments? <clears throat> Dinah and or Sam, any questions, comments? Um, uh, I, have, I have concerns about the fact that, you know, the two parking spots, um, I also just have concerns that that is, you know, a highly trafficked area. I mean, that is the entrance to the town and about a lot of people moving through there, you know, so my issue is safety. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I do have, uh, Oh, Sam, uh, sorry. <laughs> sorry to cut you off. I didn't know if you guys wanted to speak to that or, um, sure. Um, well, first of all, we're not planning on renting out a ton because we're here like at the time. So it's only like once or twice a month, maybe. Um, so, and we're going to be very strict too about who we're allowing, you know, screening up for. Um, also, I do want to add two more parking spots in the, the next year where right in front of those two, we can easily move a few bushes and add some more key gravel and then get four spots and we'll go through the process with Deb to do that. Okay. But that's our plan down the line, so. Okay, um, but with that said, if you're gonna add the four, the two cars, but your occupancy does not change. Correct, Okay. just just for traffic, vehicle yeah. traffic. Okay, uh, Sam, sorry, go ahead. No problem. Uh, yeah, I'd like to uh, just comment uh, uh, to the, is it the Marians? Is that how you pronounce it? Yep. Okay. Um, I, I've been uh, only involved in the town council for a short, short period of time. And uh, I want to say up front that I'm opposed to expanding any further short term rentals in the community. Uh, I've been here since 2004. And uh, We've seen a lot of uh, disruption in a peaceful environment that we uh, have grown to love in Michigan Shores. And I just want you to know that the town is serious about enforcement and enforcement of all the regulations about noise, fireworks. Uh, I've seen it all. I've seen public urination by uh, renters and uh, it's just, it just, uh, something that I'm passionately uh, opposed to. Um, I'm passionately in favor of uh, keeping Michigan Shores the way it's been in, in, uh, in a nice, peaceful, quiet uh, community to live in. So that being said, uh, you know you know your uh, responsibilities as the owners and uh, we'll, we'll hopefully not have any uh, problems, but uh, be aware that uh, uh, the town is concerned about um, uh, some of the problems that have been brought in uh, as a result of short-term rentals. And it's not 
just Michiana Shores. You read about all the all the various Airbnb uh, problems that have happened throughout the country. So uh, it's real, and it's here in Michiana Shores as well. And uh, we want we want uh, your full cooperation. Understood. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? Um, would I make this a conditional approval uh, once we locate the hundred and fifty dollar of application fee? Yeah, approval so, contingent on confirmation. <coughs> so I need a motion. I'll make a motion to approve uh, the short uh, rental uh, application for permit at Lost Four Twelve. For Four Twelve approval under the conditions that we confirm the permit fee has been. Any comment, Rich? I just, <clears throat> I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Three ayes and we're out. Okay, we got there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, moving forward to number nine, departmental reports. Police Chief Brooks is there. Good evening, everyone. For the month of February, the Long Beach Police Department responded to 230 calls for service when compared to 132 calls for service in the previous year for an increase of 92 calls for service. During the month, 18 incident reports were documented with 12 individuals that were arrested, one felony arrest for a felony operating motor vehicle while intoxicated, 11 misdemeanor arrests Six individuals were arrested for operating a motor vehicle while intoxicated. A total of six misdemeanor arrests for traffic related offenses. Overall, for the month, our staff stayed very active. Uh, specific to the town of Michiana Shores, I would like to note on February 15th, Deputy Mitchell Sites responded to Pontchartrain Drive, reference an unresponsive mail. We have a history of responding to this residence for prior narcotics violations and family domestics. Upon arrival, Deputy Mitchell Sykes located the father holding his 42-year-old son upright in a chair in the kitchen. The male was unresponsive and non-verbal. Taking into account the previous drug history at that home, Deputy Sykes administered one dose of Narcan to the nasal passage. Upon the arrival of medical staff, the male then became responsive. Um, it should be noted that the male was recently, or I'm sorry, released from the county jail after we had arrested him just weeks earlier for drug possession as a level six felony. On uh, this particular evening, uh, no drugs were located in the home and we, uh, we uh, took the case report for a future reference as well. Aside from that, um, we'll increase the traffic patrols Special along El Portal. Now the weather has begun to improve, and we'll also be placing our radar trailer out sometime in the next two months as well. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. All right, Fire Chief Gary Bendix. Well, for the month of February, we spent 192.26 hours on everything. Uh, we had four meetings during the month. Um, during the month, we had seven calls and one call in Michigan Shores. Everywhere else was first or So, uh, if you notice, out the truck bay, the meeting malls, we had a new floor put in here, and a new paint job. We're tired of paying for the maintenance on this floor. So, hopefully, within the next month or so, before the next meeting, we may have it in. Don't know for sure yet. So, but the whole station interior is going to get painted. Right. Awesome. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. All right. Building Commissioner, Code Enforcement, Deb Chubb. Uh, yeah, I emailed the report out. Uh, not much to report. A few building uh, permits issued. Um, a staff work order issued. Fine was paid. And the uh, issue was resolved within 48 hours. Okay. Any questions from the council members? <laughs> Dinah, Sam? No, no comments on that. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank, thank you, Deb. 
I don't see Dolly Millick here. I don't think she's on virtually as well, so we'll bypass the park board unless someone has something to report. Just that they have a meeting this month. Excuse me? Just that they have a meeting this month. Anything to share? March 27th. Oh, 7 gotcha. Okay. All right, next up, uh, Road Commissioner Bob Sikowski. Well, happy to report, I guess happy to report. First time in 45 years, we've only plowed snow four hours in February. Isn't that nice? <laughs> That's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Hey, Bob, I did have a question. Um, when the now that the ground is kind of uh, warming up a little bit, any idea or plans for the, just random potholes throughout the, the town? Probably even it warms up a little bit. Yeah. My mother-in-law was out. Stuff there. doesn't work well. With <laughs> My mother-in-law told me that, that the road was all had little potholes, so I told her I mentioned in the meeting. So my job's done. So we'll we'll look for an update uh, throughout the uh, year. So thank you. Advisory Planning Commission, Ralph Box. Uh, we didn't have any uh, uh, come to us for the permits at the last meeting. As I said, we did vote on the uh, comprehensive plan to move it forward to the town council. We are also working on um, uh, potential updates to the rules surrounding children's homes. Um, we're slowly working through the ideas and trying to digest those. Um, so it will be probably a couple more months before we have a solid list that uh, we can uh, discuss more. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, nothing from BCA. Matt Bowen is not present. Uh, White Ditch Drainage Board, Dinah Dumbries. Any update? Yeah. Um, Dinah? I keep, I, keep muting, I keep muting myself so you wouldn't hear my little uh, guest for the week, okay? Um, anyway, um, White Ditch, I reported to them about various branches and an entire fir tree that is in the creek uh, or in the ditch east of Pokagan, between Pokagan and the Michigan shoreline. So the LaBert County Drainage is just proposing that they send through a crew that will clean those kind of branches up and off of those, you know, the actual... Uh, banks that are actually falling and slipping because there's more than just that those that are likely to fall right in um, so anyway we'll be waiting to hear from them on when they do that but that's uh, that's what's going on with regards to the drainage board got it thank you uh, okay. what website Samantha Arnold I'm guessing no She's and then NERPC would be you again Dinah Okay, no report today. There's a meeting uh, Thursday morning, so I will be at that and have some news from that for the next meeting. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, moving on to number 10, unfinished business. Um, addition of name of town to the notice, notice board near stop 37. Um, my notes, correct me if I'm wrong, Ralph, uh, we were going to look into this. Uh, um, yeah, if you guys remember, I had uh, two companies a while back about potential uh, signage. Uh, I didn't bring copies for anybody this time, but they talked about the last time. And the consensus was that we liked uh, one particular option. Um, and there were questions about the materials. So I happened to be in the other day and to stop by and get samples of materials. So basically the, the sign will be a white uh, raised uh, border and then raised wording, which is Michigan Shores. And depending on the um, element that we included, uh, maybe uh, something that is close to what's on the town um, signage, um, right front, um, that would be raised as well. Uh, and the raised things would be this. It's a plastic, uh, poly, you know, styrene kind of stuff, polyurethane. Um, and then the backing would be um, metal, uh, and then it would be, uh, uh, they won't print on it, it would be covered with a uh, heavy duty uh, label uh, that would really be the, the blue part because the background of the uh, sign. Um, so I, I looked at some of the other stuff they had there. These, this is the option available. Mm -hmm. We do not, we can't go with um, uh, 
a more sophisticated approach unless we go for a bigger sign because the routing equipment can't do um, fine detail on the smaller sign. So we'll, we have to use a backplate like that. Um, Prices around 600 bucks. <laughs> um, um, I think somebody had asked, maybe it was Sam, do you know what the, the lifespan of this type of material? Uh, they said that they've been using it for 15 years and nobody's ever complained to them yet. Um, but, you know, it's out in the elements. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say that there's a lot, they've done a lot of work in communities around here. Um, and in larger towns as well, they, there's a pretty big shop. Um, good reputation. Okay. Well, then, you know, why don't we take a look at making a decision on getting these things ready to go? Because springtime is here, we're going to have traffic coming through, and we might as well identify ourselves. Um, yeah, and I, I realize it's uh, not inexpensive, but the expectation is that the ARPA funds will cover this as part of the the signs as well, so we won't, don't have the eventual direct cost uh, because it's part of the signage. Okay. So now, you, go ahead, Diana. Yeah, can the, can, oh, I'm sorry. Can the label, can this kind of name this as part of those signs that we were getting through ARPA? So can the cost of these be applied to the ARPA funds as well because it does name the town? Uh, Ralph mentioned that already. Yes, we're okay. looking into it. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. No, you're fine. Um, the, uh, the really outstanding thing would be for us to decide what we want the design element to look like. This guy just took the images I sent him to make something up. That's not necessarily what we want. It looks okay, but I think we have to spend a little more time um, deciding about that before we go off and spend some money. Um, I'm not really sure how to proceed on that. I can continue to work on it and involve other people from the town council. I don't think all of us need to be engaged in the thought process, uh, but anybody's welcome to just... You still mean that you need with them? Because essentially what we do is we just verbally tell them kind of what we're looking for and he creates it in the software? Or uh, yeah, out. he'll make an image and send it back to us and we'll prove it. So, we can see an electronic image, we can bounce it around if we want to make changes. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, just I'll, I'll, I'll join those calls. Okay. With you. And, and I'll share it with the rest of the town council. Yeah, because I like, I think we all agree that there's one that stuck out mm -hmm. in terms of, of how, you know, the positioning of it, but to your point, if you want to spend some more time on the graphics itself, then. So but they're, they're probably going to hesitate spending more time on it unless we give them the overhead that we're going to do this. So. We probably, I propose that we vote yeah. to proceed or not tonight, and then I can engage in, in more conversation. Okay, now if I'd like to interject here. Now, you know, you showed us samples of it the last time around, and those are, that's the logo that the town has been using, you know, for some time. Is there any problem with using what was put on those, on those proposed, you know, main boards? Do you foresee a need that it has to be changed in some way? Uh, well, it, no, but it, Donna, I've been around a lot of graphic stuff in the past, and I haven't looked at this in great detail. My guess is the guy just made it up really quick. Uh, it might not be high enough resolution. You know, I just don't know. That hasn't been the focus of my conversation with them. I wanted to get to this point before we got into that level of detail. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah, and if you didn't hear, Ralph and I were going to try to join a call to get this uh, squared away sooner rather than later. Sure. So, okay? That sounds great. Sounds great. Thank you. Thanks, Ralph. Do you have any other comments? Or uh, I would ask uh, Sam's thoughts on this. Well, Sam, any uh, comments or, or questions regarding what we just discussed for the town side? No, I, I, uh, I had input on the samples that were uh, provided last time and I think the I think the logo that we've been using, as Diana mentioned, is uh, I think it's recognizable and and a good one. It's it's on sweatshirts and various other items, coffee mugs and whatnot. So hopefully we can use that and whatever uh, finishes are uh, are the best that's going to withstand some heavy weather. You know. Mm -hmm. um, Got it. 
So do we want to make a motion then to pursue this aside into greater details to your point of saying we want to go with them? Well, I'd like to make sure we get Rich's comments. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead, Rich. Lots of science? Yeah. Um, sounds fine to me. Uh, we, the logo we've been using, is, there's nothing official about it. Yes, there is. There is? It's copyrighted. It's ours. They, that was done when we did the, uh, I, I believe it was when they did something with the trail, with the sweatshirts. When they got the sweatshirts, it was designed. Well, the first it's time ours. we had that logo was on the banners. Wasn't it? What? It might have been, well, but it, 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 it is did. our logo and right. Well, that should be used, you know, by just anybody. We can use it yeah. because it's ours. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. So we might want to stick with it. It's nice. It shows what. Yeah, and I, I like it too. I just want to make sure it fits and looks right. You know, these are kind of just quick and dirty drawings. And it has come up through it. It grabs people's attention. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you want to make a, a motion then to pursue? I would like to make a motion to uh, uh, continue and um, uh, give some co-signs uh, the okay that we're going to proceed with this project with them. Um, I think the way it will work, Joan, is that we get a final quote from them after the conversations Michael and I had. And we get a final quote and then um, we can proceed from there. I'm not, I'm not exactly what sure. What company are you working with? Uh, Simco Signs. In Simco. <coughs> Where are the other? Uh, uh, Alpha Wazen. Do we need to wait till we have a final firm quote before we vote on it? Are you saying before you, uh, say that again, do you need to have a final what? Firm quote. Is, John, well, I said my, I would vote to uh, you know to move forward and, and leave then the uh, responsibility for the two of you if you're going to be talking about it, looking at it for you and Michael to make the decision. You know, uh, I think that uh, Sam gave an opinion. I gave my opinion on this, and I think you guys I don't know what Rich is saying on it because I couldn't quite hear. But you know, I would say let's just move forward with it, <clears throat> and then you can make the decision whatever last final. You know, we know the price approximately what it is, so, so just the final details on looking at that photo, go ahead and move. Okay, so I'll change my uh, um, proposal to, uh, I, I say that we vote on a um, approval of the Simbo signs, um, proposed sign from the Shannon Shores at approximately $600. Okay. Sounds good to me. Oh, All in favor? Uh, Aye. Yeah. Uh, just Aye. Just uh, you need a purchase order. Yes, once we have the quote, I'll ask you to get a purchase order. Right? Okay. You need a purchase order. All right, thank you, Ralph. Uh, next up, we have an update on the MS4 designation. Dinah? Yeah, okay. Um, hi again, everybody. Um, Reggie Porthals came to give us a, a little bit of an update and information on uh, the IDEM MS4 designation that our town fell under um, as last year. So I have sent various information out to you so you would be able to see. Rich, I'm not even sure whether you got you know all the information, the paperwork. I know that she had brought some more paperwork with her that day. Um, I would like us, I mean, we, were gonna, we are, need to make our decision at the latest at our next meeting so that the next morning I could let them know. How we're going with it. Um, there are, I've still reached out to them. I haven't heard back. I have to follow up with phone calls um, to two individuals who are working on this particular thing, you know, to find out that since we are so small, perhaps we may be able to just be out of it completely. I'll make another call to Reggie to hear from her, you know, what she says about what would be the 
you know, let's say the negative, you know, points of our not joining in with the MS4. Um, so hopefully I'll be able to provide some more information, all of which I would share with you before the next meeting took place so that we would be able to have a last discussion and make a decision. It does sound like it may help us to maintain a little bit more careful, maybe control of what takes place with regards to development, for instance, on our lakefront. It uh, may also affect some of the development and stuff that takes place along the um, uh, White Ditch because of water and runoff and what's taking place there. I don't know how much, but there are things that it, it might, you know, um, help with. It would also help us to apply for a certain number of grants that we are not able to, you know, apply for currently. So that, you know, it, it could be that this, it is going to be um, a very small financial investment right now for the actual permitting, because of course they charge, it's like, I think they said 80 some dollars and it's a for a five year period. But there are going to be some reports that will have to be generated and one of our town members will have to be trained in some of the responsibilities that go along with being an MS4. So, you know, I know they have classes and various things taking place. So anyway, um, there's some good, there's some bad, and we have to make a final decision whether we apply for the, you know, that we don't want to do it at all. We let them know and then you know, we apply to be, you know, taken off the list or we agree and then we move forward forward with all the things we have to do. And then there is quite a bit of time during the next five years during which we actually have to, you know, update some things and make certain reports and so forth. So I hope to have all the answers for you in the next week so that I could, you know, put it all together in a document and then send it to you to read through. Okay? Okay. So Donna, one of the options I think is to, uh, we are, we have been designated as MS4, right? So we have to do one of the three options. I yes. One of them right. is to, to plead that we're, we shouldn't be. Correct. Get an exemption. Is that correct? Yes. What's your... Yes. I've, I've written to them with regards to that because we are so small. Because after reading and rereading the documentation, it's like, you know, they're talking communities under 1,000. And, and I wrote and I explained, I said, most of the year we're a community of maybe 250 you know, let alone under a thousand, you know, and how small we are, how little frontage we have on the lake and so forth, you know, so we'll, we'll see what they say, you know, on that part. So if you don't have any other questions, that's all I have on this. All right, thanks, Diana. Um, moving okay. forward, the new 11A, since we did move up the refuse contract to the beginning of the meeting, um, this is a spring letter for 2023, uh, just an update that there will be one going out in the next couple weeks with various topics. I believe Dinah did send out uh, some emails to get some information and input from you. Um, I think one of the biggest things that's going to be uh, shared is that we have our spring leaf pickup dates um, already confirmed. They will be April 10th and May 1st. Um, and we, at which time we will educate our members to our residents to remove the small twigs and branches so that they don't uh, damage any of the leaf vacuums and or their equipment as they come around. Um, so be on the lookout for that within the next couple of weeks. Anything to add, Dinah? Yes, and then just uh, please to remind everybody, do, do not place leaves onto the street. Bring them up to the edge of the pavement. So, and as well, just a reminder, because we had some residents who had contractors working for them, and they actually placed their leads, the contractors did, across Michiana Drive and onto Michigan State property. Um, the village of Michiana was not happy with that taking place. I approached the uh, homeowners, and a couple of them were very, you know, very gladly complied, and I have not heard back from two of them. So, uh, with regards to that so but the village of Michiana did reach out to us several times regarding this particular issue so just make sure that nothing like that yeah. takes place you know going forward got it thank you all right moving on to number 12 the attorney report Mr. Damsky first in general there's uh, fines and citations that are going to move forward to legal I've had communication with that on one particular gentleman and I just got some citations sent last week, I need to follow up on her, or follow up that one. Um, they looked older, and then I heard reference in the billing to other legal that was already being involved with that name, so I just need clarification. I'll, I'll reach out to Deb. 
this week and find that out. Um, on the sewer connection, we'll give you all an update on that. Basically, Michigan City revised their uh, ordinance or, or their regulations on that to loosen it up. Uh, basically, for somebody to tap into it now, they just have to say not that they're agreeing to annex, but they're they're not going to object to annexation if that happens at some point in the future. You remember Mr. Perrin was in previously, his attorney reached out to us, they've been in touch with City of Michigan City as far as what they need to do to get permission from the city to tap in. One of the requirements the city's put on them is that the town council, you guys would ultimately at some point have to vote to say that you're allowing them to tap in. The way I read the memorandum of understanding from that point, and I've talked with my partner Doug about this as well, the town then kind of serves as a pass-through entity. There's a fee that the person tapping in has to pay to recover the cost from the original construction. They would issue that to the town, but the town would then basically turn around and issue that back out to the receiving party for the additional cost of the construction. And then, by understanding, Michigan City would actually then be managing the, the new tapping. And when you say tapping, will they be doing the future maintenance and, and as well? Yeah, the, the town still owns the the line, mm -hmm. um, but the city would be maintaining it. The city will be with that. So um, that's the not city will what? I'm sorry. Could you repeat that? It wasn't clear. The city would be city servicing will. it. The city, Michigan City, will be servicing uh, the sewer and the sewer hookup. Okay. Right. All right, now I'm going to ask the question. Now, this is happening for the parents. Will this same the service be provided for, I don't know how many other no. people can tap into that line there? The original MOU looked like there were seven potential tap ins on that line. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, okay, thank it, you. It, it's not on the agenda, so I don't know that it's appropriate to take action on it tonight, but eventually they're going to be asking that you guys vote to give them permission so that they can move forward with Michigan City. So, um, recently, Long Beach went through a similar process and literally all it, all Michigan City needed was an email from the Long Beach attorney saying that the board could approve it. So okay. not going to take a lot of fair sure. action on your part other than a motion and vote approval. Okay. okay. Thank you for the explanation. Yep. Any other comments, questions? Yeah, I have a question. I was still on this. I was on this council when we approved the building and let the building. But no, am I not correct? We never did take official ownership of that sewer. Line. As far as having anything, an ordinance or I remember being the one on the board that kept saying, you know, and, and Attorney Gunning was, you know, right behind me saying. You know, that we have to take ownership of it. This is how it's done, I swear. It's in the MOU, though. If yeah. You, if you read the MOU, it's in the memorandum of understanding. Yeah. That, you should have a copy of it. I think I but, gave you a copy. Well, yeah, I'm the one that gave you a couple of these copies because you were looking for them back then, I think. But no, I, anyway. Anyway, I took them out of the file. They, they're, just, they're in a special file. Attorney okay. Gunning kept saying that we need to get this clarified, and I, I agree with Rich. And then maybe that is something that should be discussed at an executive session, since it's a legal issue. Uh, Brad, your thoughts? Yeah, I think if it's not clarified, the way I read the memorandum of understanding, and obviously I wasn't around when that was put mm -hmm. in place, it was that the town would be. Take ownership of it. I mean, it's constructed in your right of way. They were supposed to. Right. I don't, yeah. And I don't actually, know what we had to do officially to do it. What I can say most recently is the email from the Michigan City Attorney to the parents' attorney did address that the town owned. Let me see if I can find that. Okay. Well, it might make sense for us to include this. Uh, there's a couple of other items we might want to talk about in an executive session. Yeah, I think that's best. To include this and that, because I've got some maybe detailed questions, and this is probably not the right form for me to go down that path. Yeah. And, and to be clear, it's not, he's questioning that. He's not making a declaratory statement. Mm -hmm. 
So I, I, what I remember is Attorney Gunning kept saying that before we do take ownership, we we need to have you know engineers inspect that and make sure that it was done right and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, we never did it. Yeah. yeah. So executive session will be scheduled, Dinah, as well yeah, for this. Okay. Yes. We will we'll schedule a session just to discuss that particular topic then. Okay. okay. Thank you. Any other comments? All right. Moving on to 13A. Again, we did update this. Uh, we had a discussion, previous discussion in meetings about reinstalling the town map. Uh, do we have an update on who was doing that? And if, if so, uh, how, how is that going? Sam, was that you, sir? I'm sorry, can you repeat that, Michael? Uh, for 12A, uh, uh, sorry, 13A, uh, reinstalling the town map that had fallen? Oh, yeah. Uh, Bob Sokolsky and I um, communicated shortly after that meeting, and uh, he's got a location that are that is close to the uh, post office boxes or the mailboxes that the t behind the town center that he thinks would be ideal. When the weather breaks, then uh, there are two things that we need to do. We need to firm up the, the location and make a decision on that. Um, I'll report back to everyone before we plant it. And then uh, it needs some re rehabbing. Uh, you know, the, the posts obviously need to be uh, redone and then another round of uh, seal coating of the paint. So before it goes up, we'll get, get all that done. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thanks, Sam. Thanks, Bob. Thanks. All right, moving on to number 14. Any communications received? Nothing. All right, moving forward, number 15, public comment. Anyone online that wants to make a public comment? Okay, we now move to council comment. Sam, Dinah, Rich. Um, I don't have any other council, any comments, you know, today. I think I'm set. Okay. I'm good. All right. So we'll make a motion to adjourn. Can somebody make a motion to adjourn? I'm sorry, Rich. Did you have any comments? I'm sorry. I was just going to mention that uh, the first park board meeting and booster club meeting of the year will be the 27th. Right, Joe? Yeah. Is it, is it park board or is it park booster? It is the park booster. Should be park booster and park board, both of them. They're both, well, I know it's advertised on the board. The boosters are at 6.30 and the park board is at 7. Okay. Any other comments before we adjourn? All right. Need a motion to adjourn the meeting. Thank you, Michael. Yes, the meeting is adjourned at 8.24 p.m.